some days it's very hard. There have been days that I have just, just broke down and cried. And you know it's the best thing for the animal. I can tell that from a medical standpoint, but it, it doesn't make it easy. I was sad. I felt sad for her because she loved this cat so much. I felt sad for him, too, for the cat. You know, he certainly had a very good life, and it's a horrible disease, but all of a sudden, we're at the end. Thanks, Tony. In the operating room, Dr. Michelle Kudish performs the delicate surgery on shame. We see any number of animals that come in after eating rocks and corn cobs and things like tinsel at Christmas time. This is his small intestine that's totally placated from the pantyhose obstructing it. I don't think this would have made it through on its own, that's for sure. Yep, it's pantyhose, all right. Hopefully the owners will be a little bit more aware now of what they can and can't allow this puppy to play with. The surgery itself went very, very well. Um, got the whole pantyhose out. What, what kind of pantyhose was it? No idea. It was all bunched up, and uh, I had to cut it. The one with the um, it, it was. It was not. I don't think it was a full pantyhose. How was your date today? For Suzanne Rodriguez, her roommate Gail Mahoney, and Gail's cat Cooper Black, adjusting to life without spits hasn't been easy. Under the bed. He's been meowing a lot lately, too. It's only been two days, but I can still feel him around the house. Help me. I need love. My cat's been looking everywhere for spits, just sort of walking around with a lost look on his face. It's not only affected us, but it's affected him, too. I can really sense that. I couldn't go any further with treatment um, because they couldn't guarantee that my cat would ever get better. And I just really couldn't afford to spend thousands of dollars. And I really didn't want it to come down to that kind of situation. But I knew I had to do it this way. I knew I had to be fair. And I think I made the right decision. I know he's okay now. A beloved pet is a great love in a person's life, and I myself know what it means to lose uh, someone like that. They provide warmth and unqualified devotion in a way that no human being can. After two days in intensive care, Shane is ready to go home. Here he is. Hi, Mama, look at you! You don't realize how close and attached you can get to an animal, not just a dog, but any animal. You know, you think some people are crazy because they go nuts over a bird or a cat or whatever, but he's a really good dog. <laughs> Proud of my dog. Hello, hello. That hospital, I swear by it, God forbid anything ever happens again, I wouldn't even think twice to take them there. They were wonderful, wonderful. You all done any pantyhoses? We got rid of those, huh? People think I'm nuts, because I say Shane, Shane this, Shane that, and they look at me like, I didn't know you had a baby. It's like, oh, my little dog is so cute, see pictures, and then, you know, they think, they think you're nuts, you know? But he's my baby. There you go. I love my dog. Good boy. <laughs> This series is dedicated to the men and women who risk everything to save the life of a stranger. I'm William Shatner. Join us again next week for more true stories on Rescue 911.